For this question, we're asked to consider a peak rectifier fed by a 60 hertz sinusoidal having a peak value, VP, is equal to 100 volts. So we'll come back to this 100 volts a little bit later because we're going to have to use it in our equation. We're going to let the load resistance be R is equal to 10 kilo ohms. We need to find the value of the capacitance C. So we will highlight this and something else and it's going to result in a peak-to-peak -peak ripple of 2 volts. So this is another important thing to note. So our ripple here is going to be 2 volts. We're also going to calculate the fraction of the cycle during which the diode is conducting and the average and peak values of the diode current. So we have two things that we need to calculate and we are given three things. So to start this off, we want to find our capacitance, the value of our capacitance, C. So now we're going to walk through this problem. So if we look at the notes, link below the like button, we have this VR, and it's equal to our VP and our T over RC. Now there's a few things that we have to change. Um, in fact, we're also given another piece of information, the 60 hertz sinusoid, right? So if we want to find our C, we're going to have to rewrite this. C is going to be equal to our VP times our T divided by our VR times R. Notice how we have our C right here, our VP up top, our VR here, and then our R right here. Now we have an F here, and this F is really our T. Remember that F is just equal to one over T. The frequency is one over our period. And so our VP, if we plug in our values, is 100. And then this is gonna be over R2, because our VR is peak to peak ripple. That's what our VR is for, is two volts, times our frequency, which is 60 times the resistance, which is 10 kilo ohms, and that's going to give us approximately 83.3 microfarads. Now the conduction angle, which is our omega delta t change in time, is found from our other equation that we have right here. It's going to be on page approximately 67. Our equation is the square root, and then we have 2 times our vr divided by our vp. Remember our vr is the peak to peak ripple, so we're going to have 2 times our 2 volts, and it's going to be divided by our VP, which is 100 volts, and that's going to give us 0.2 rads. Now, we want to convert from radians per second to our percentage, and that is what we have right here. So we have rads, and then we're going to go into this percentage here. So we have 0.2, which is our rads, and it's going to be divided by 2 pi and multiplied by 100. This is going to give us 3.18% of our cycle. And the 2 pi is just to put it in its angle form. The average diode current is obtained from our other equation right here. We have 4.31, so that would be in the book. But here it's going to be ID average. So our ID average is equal to these things. So we have our IL, and our IL is just going to be the voltage divided by resistance. That's Ohm's law. So voltage divided by resistance, we have our VP as 100 volts, and then we have our resistance as 10 kilo ohms. So that's gonna give us 10 right here, but it's not just going to be a 10. Uh, for notation, it's omitted, but this is going to be a 10 milliamps right here. And then inside of it, we have our one plus, and then we are going to have our pi, right? So we're not gonna write it like how we have here. We're gonna write, write, write it like how we have here. Uh, and this is because we don't have T, we were given the frequency. So we have our pi here, and we're gonna have these square roots. We have our two VP over VR, and that's very familiar to what we had uh, right actually right here with our omega delta t. So we have the square root of 2 vr over vp. This is going to be a little bit different where it's vp over vr. And that's going to give us 324 milliamps. We're going to do the same thing for our id max. Um, we're doing this because we also want to calculate the fraction of the cycle during which the diode is conducting and the average and peak values of our diode current. So this right here is going to be in here and in here. So our ID max is equal to, basically we're going to use the same formula, our IL, which is just our VP, the peak value, divided by our resistance. It's going to give us 10 milliamps. And then we have basically the same thing inside of here, but we have VP over 
VR on this one. But in this one we have two because this is going to be essentially two times R I D average, uh, not exactly the same, but the same for or pretty much two times R I D average for small values. And we can see that's gonna give us 638 milliamps. And we can see that when we push 10 milliamps, we're gonna get a larger output. However, this only happens for 3.18% of our cycle, so it's all coming together. They conduct a lot of current, but not for a long period of time, and the average current is gonna be about half of our peak current. We see our average here, this is our max here. So we just went over, over the ripple voltage, and it's gonna look something like this. This is what our waveform looks like. This is gonna be the equations that we're going to be using, and how we got some of them. Then we covered an example. Now, we again looked at the ripple voltage, and this is going to be the ripple voltage for half wave. And we should actually note that in here. So we'll do ripple voltage, parenthesis, half wave. And now there's another topic that's very similar to this, and it's going to be the ripple voltage for a full wave rectifier. And this is going to be basically the same thing. So it's we can if we look at the waveform here, and we look at the waveform here, the only difference is that the lower peaks are up top, right? So we don't have anything below our um, T line right here. And what this means is that our period, our T, is going to be half this. So the equations are going to be exactly the same, it's just going to be T over 2. So when we're looking at questions, we need to be careful when it's asking us if it's a full wave, which is this, or a half wave uh, ripple voltage, which is what we just covered.